tonight on Felicia, Sir Firetown, vibrant. But things emanated from there. I was just very possessed. That is a euphemism for stealing. There was pain, but the spirit stayed. When you see the police, you say, hey, Jack, shandy sell a rock. We're recreating it because it has so much magic. Let's not forget our stars. Sir Firetown. Welcome, welcome. Today we are acknowledging and paying tribute to the achievements of generations of musicians and composers. We are also going to take a journey back down memory lane to reminisce about the nostalgic music of Sophia Town, which was created by some of these music giants. Sophia Town bears a sad past, but amid the pain and suffering, there was an unbelievable vibe which even I can remember as a child. One composer who will remain in the annals of South African history is Inok Sontonga, who composed our national anthem, Nkosisikeleli Afrika. Let us welcome the Doke House Band and singers as they lead us in singing Kosisikelele the way Mr. Sontonga had previously composed it. just pounce on you. Can you comment about uh, Mr. Sontonga, the research that you've done, and what you found that maybe young people don't quite know about? Well, firstly, he was a school teacher. And towards the end of the last century, he composed it as a song for the mine hostels. What they were finding was the, most of the miners were coming in from the, uh, from the rural areas. They were homesick. And it was a song to actually try and uplift their spirits. But what happened was Innocent Tonga passed away, and it was, it was actually performed for the first time a year later at the opening of the Nansfield Hostel. And obviously, that was, it was almost as a posthumous song. He wasn't there when it was first played. And that was on the eve of the Boer War, 1899. Wow. Mm. We learn something every day. We learn something every day. Gold Reef City has recently put together the Hall of Fame and the Street of Stars. The Music Hall of Fame and Street of Stars honors such musicians as Enoch Sontonga for Nkosi Sekelela, Solomon Linda for Mbube, Emily Mozziello for Seronta Bule, Wilson King for Silji, Weekend, McKay Devache for Laku Chona Langa, Peter Rizant, In the Mood, Vi and Corsi, the famous trombonist. Strike Villacazzi, Meadowlands. The Manhattan Brothers, Jigala Maweni. Kippy Mokezzi, Blues for Huey. Spokes Masciani for Ace Blues. And Todd Machikiza for Hamburg Achle. That's something that should have happened a long time ago. 
And this was a starting point to actually, uh, in other words, the Music Hall of Fame will never be completed. You're going to keep adding to it. Mm. But it was a starting point that you could, you, there would be a facility where all the information could be gathered and people who want to know more about it could actually go to a place where that is now archived and housed. As the adage goes, a prophet is never appreciated in their own backyard. But today, we want to reverse that. The Manhattan Brothers are indeed icons of all times. They stood at the apex of African entertainment in the 40s and 50s. Whether they're shouting the blues or howling the boogie-woogie beat or jamming the jazz idiom or moaning the sad ballads of love, the Manhattan Brothers are always in harmony. In November 1955, the Manhattan Brothers celebrated 21 years in show business. In 1954, the Manhattan Brothers discovered a great voice in the amazing Miriam Nightingale Makeba, too shy for comfort. The Manhattan Brothers have arrived. They have conquered the show world. They have traveled from the Cape to the Congo and sung to the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret. At the end of King Kong's season at the London West End Theatreland in December 1961, the brothers decided to stay behind to show the English what their capabilities were. They rubbed shoulders on stage with great artists like the American Ink Spots, the Delta Rhythm Boys, the Mills Brothers, the Golden Gates, and many, many others. Yes, the Manhattan Brothers are known throughout the world. Those Manhattan Brothers, they were the guys, huh? Uh -huh. What were some of the songs that young people should be remembering that you did? Uh, Kumbula Jane. Kumbula Jane, mm. Sitando Sam. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kolelai, <laughs> Zipozo Zam. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, Dolly Retebe. I remember going to Odin Cinema, and there she was in her outfit. In a, in a, they say that was a, a, a scarf that you were tying, tied around you in that picture. Yes, it was. That was a scarf, tying yeah, that scarf, little yeah. scarf on, in that picture there. Oh my gosh, you look good, girl. <laughs> you look good. And here, to sing one of their favorite tunes are the young Manhattans from Dokey House. They're going to sing Jigele Maweni. I see Shai Bafa. Jigele Maweni Diyamba. Jigele Maweni Diyamba. Jigele Maweni Diyamba. Jigele Maweni Diyamba. I can't stop my quick. I can't stop my mind.
taking you far away. Hey, baby, they remember all those days. Why, uh, yeah. You know, when, when I saw my brothers at that time, when I was still a young guy, you know, uh. going down to the nine steps, uh. taking their babes with them, you uh. know, they would move like, you know, the cross streets. Yeah, they'd, hear, they'd have a head and like head that And head like time. those, baby. Oh, yeah, I, I know Daddy you. used to have one. So boy. that's why maybe this head, because it, it reminds me it of reminds those days of Safar Town. Of Safar Town oh, you know, this, yeah. the, the nice streets that were quiet, full uh, of laughter, uh, full of love. Mm. You name it, baby, it's there. Oh, well, excuse <laughs> me. Excuse me. Stay tuned. It's getting hotter and hotter in studio, literally and otherwise. Mara Law recaptures the nostalgic tunes of Sapphire Town. <laughs> Post-traumatic stress syndrome is the consequence of overwhelming, often life-threatening situations and the fear that ensues. Do you think you might be suffering from this condition? Give us a call. We'd like to help. 082-280-8585. Oh, well. Golden oldie. We are reminiscing about the nostalgic music of generations of artists and reliving the vibe of Sapphire Town, which was the cultural hub of black South African musical history. To take us back to Sapphire Town, here is Mara Law with a song called Sapphire Town Theme. It is named after the heroes, is it Mara? Yes, Tell us a little bit about the song. The song has been written specially for the musical uh, Sophia Town Experience, which opened a couple of days ago at the Sentin Convention Center. It's entitled Heroes. It's paying tribute to all the heroes and the legends of Sophia Town. Mm -hmm. And I can see some of them are right here today. Yeah. In fact, if you go there now, you'll be seeing what is happening there. The life, the vibe of Sophia Town. Let's hear the song and then we're going to talk to some of the shiros and heroes. <laughs> <laughs> there were times, there were places We needed these faces to lead us and to guide us To show us the way with the strength and the talent Oh, the wonderful talent They move to the fore To be heroes
Mara. Wow, that was a Safar Town vibe. I just want to talk to a few people who went to the floor to dance here. You used to sing with? Could you stand up? Yeah, tell us. With my mom. I know you sang with my mom, and it was hot. She had the legs from. I mean, her legs started from here. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Tell us a little bit about the Gay Gators in Safari Town. Uh, we used to sing in, in Safari Town, and uh, our manager was James Tutu. Mm. And I remember some time ago, we used to sing with uh, Slick, we used to call him. We're Slick. Oh, right here. <laughs> Wait a minute. I used to hear my dad talk about the young Americans. So you're one of them, huh? Love Tell it. us about the young Americans. They were not gangsters, or something. No, 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 Felicia. Uh, what were they? They're Americans. They were on the Traspin. Yeah. On the Bad Rubiel, on the Traripozes, from the Lanis. What gang is Oh, my Now, that is a euphemism for stealing. Yeah, you see the Lanis, and it was on the country, Havatno. Yeah. On the Traron, on the Traripozes, from the Lanis. On the Wheat, you know. Those are the gangsters. Those are the now. You can see it. I can see it. Yeah, you're the schooners who stand here and get drank. No, you're the Pepsi Cola. Yeah, that's just like that. And I tell you, Tandy, you know. Dolly. Yeah. That's also this is the Americans. Ooh. Also Ooh. Americans. Now I'm getting the gossip here. Ah. So what happened? If they went to a, I remember one thing my mom used to say, boy, if you were in love with someone, I don't know, in Safari Town, you could not go to the Somi gang, Alexander. which was in Alexander. Yeah, like, yeah. I, get her, I know those stories, you boy. That's story. history. Those that were the nice. days, my baby. Boy, those yeah. were the days. That was now. Yeah. <laughs> At least the history is coming out here. You're looking great. the nicest thing of us, my daughter, not even Owen Seha John. Yeah. 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 Just one. As me out in my house, I'm going to make cake. Ik vat me balans kiet u. Van die balans kiet u. Dan ga je Odin toe. Nee. Je toch Odin? Balans kiet. Maar Odin, ik remember. Mijn man leeft next to Odin. Odin is een balans. Odin is een balans. Balans kiet is die pre, pre, pan zo vaten. Pre-war. Oh, pre-war. Ja, maar Odin komt achterna. You know what we're hearing here? Thanks, Tan. You're welcome. That's the language that was spoken in Safar Town. Adele, survival. tell us a little bit more. And she says it's survival it language. Survival, survival language. Dive uh -huh. survival language because if you can think of the time when we used to see the police and going from Toby Street down to uh, Anadale Street, going with our brothers because I let me think. What no, does you think? No, it's a pass, Mrs. Oh. It's a pass. <laughs> <laughs> a pass. <laughs> and so when you see the police, you say, hey, Jack, shut this little rook. <laughs> but the police guy, the white guy, he doesn't understand what are you talking about. Yeah. But the black guy, he knows. <laughs> and so this is how we speak. This is our survival Africans. Nito <laughs> Tichiku. I think of Safari Town very fondly. And the more you learn about it, the more you hear about it, the more you realize there's absolute magic. The Felicia on E! Show. We've talked to them, the movers and shakers. Change starts in your head. Felicia on E! Empowering, enlightening and bringing hope where there is despair. I never had time to say goodbye to my child. We've gone to the heart of the matter. I don't know what country we have. Felicia on E! Entertaining. <laughs> The Felicia on E Show. Exciting, empowering, enlightening, and entertaining. The nostalgia, why are you recreating it? We're recreating it because it has so much magic. And the more you learn about it, the more you hear about it, the more you realize there's absolute magic. And that's what we want to recreate, or we are, we are recreating, is the feel as you walk into Sophia Town, obviously theatrical license, mm -hmm. it's a theatre setting. That's right. But from the moment you walk through the door, there's a shoeshine guy, there's Mr. Tobiansky, who, who, who sold the property of Sophia Town mm -hmm. and named Sophia Town after his wife, mm -hmm. Sophia. And you'll go in, there'll be a jazz band, there'll be a little bar, there'll be a chauvin, a boxing ring where there'll be real boxers. A motor car and the whole the show is about experience and what we're getting as those ladies are up there so showed is that magic that vibe mm. and that's what we want you must party in safari town yeah. and only one section of 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 our population knows safari town and what we'd like to do 
is bring that to all the others because it's magic. Martin, obviously, uh, Holland Insurance has decided to sponsor this whole event. Why? Well, Holland Insurance values are diversity and fun. And uh, put your hat on, that's a fire time now. When you talk, yeah, well, I was saving that. That's it. There we go. All right. <laughs> now, now you have to put it forward a little bit. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That diversity yeah. and that fun is epitomized in Sapphire Town. Uh, I think it's very important for a people to know where they came from in order to know where they're going. I think it's also important <clears throat> for us to learn from history so that we, we replicate the good and we don't ever do the bad. Mm -hmm. And Hollard is, is really excited. Um, as, as a Hollardite, I've learned a fortune about our cultural heritage. And we're paying tribute to the legends. We're paying tribute to the people. We want to be part of the future. And so we must understand our past. Bra but Bragib, quickly, Bragib says, no, why just so far town all the time? <laughs> no, Phil, you got me wrong. Oh. I'm the last one to, you know, condemn so far Because down. you came from there. From Gibson Street, darling, Gibson Is Street. Is that why the name Gibson can't be? Well, not exactly. But what a coincidence. Yeah, yeah the, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. That is it. But uh, uh, I think of Sophia Town very fondly because um, for me, it represented... I, I, do, I never think of Sophia Town in isolation mm -hmm. as just Sophia Town. Mm -hmm. But things emanated from there. Mm -hmm. It had influences, you know, countrywide. But more than that, Phil, I, I, I look back to that era with a lot of sentiment because there was so much discipline those days. I remember the tannies jogging, figure, you know, <laughs> disciplines, and, you know, people at the time looked uh, at themselves as symbols of beauty, you know, uh, on stage, the acts were, were beautiful. Mm. People were working very hard, you know, to entertain. I remember about oh, Victor Zazulana, never mind, he was from the East End, but most of those groups, the modernists, the, the African inspots, inspots, the quality was such. And I want to say today to everybody that we have to go back to those high levels of entertainment so that we can draw the crowds back to the theater. Incidentally, uh, thank you. Those were the days I have found childhood memories of Sophia Town, where I was born and went to primary school. One of my teachers in primary school was Reverend Mutlalepule Chabaku. We used to call her Mistress June. She was strict, and I would like to take this opportunity right now to thank her for a good and great educational foundation that she gave me in Sophia Town. We used to sing in the choir for Michael Ranto. I was a little girl there at Father Huddleston's Christ the King Church who did not quite understand why my grandfather was taking me to the choir. But there we were singing. And Father Singleton took this picture and wrote, I took this picture of you because you were the prettiest little, brightest little girl in Sophia Town. The best portrait I have ever taken. Thanks, Father Huddleston. Thanks, Father Singleton. But there was this song. I don't care where you are in the world, when you hear it, it reminds you of South Africa, but more importantly, Sophia Town. Middlelands by Strike Vilagasi. <laughs>
Shian. Remember Emily Mutsieloa. Remember Peter Rizant. Yeah, we'll be talking about them. <laughs> Are South Africans against foreigners in general and against black foreigners in particular? How do you feel towards foreigners? Are you a foreigner who has been a victim of xenophobia? Give us a call 082 280 8585. Send your topic suggestions to FMS Productions, P.O. Box 29896, Melville 2109, or email us at fmsp at iafrica.com. To be part of our studio audience, call us on Johannesburg 476-8411 or 2. We are honoring some of South Africa's greatest musical icons, Today we say, folk, we've not forgotten you. You still live in our hearts and souls. Mishak has been asking me for a number of months and years, I should say, do something on Sofar Town. And I want to find out, Mishak, why? I mean, why Sofar Town? Why not Alexander? Why not uh, Pinville? Why not uh, Soweto? No, <clears throat> no, when I say Sofar Town, I really mean, you know, Sofar Town was more of a symbolic place, OK? This yeah. was a time when, uh, you know, black South Africa was emerging as a modern, urban, dynamic place. I mean, things were happening all over the place. You know, in the, on the East Rand, there was Painville, there was Benoni, Etwatwa, you know, George Koch, Alexandra. You know, just like a new African consciousness emerging. And it was a very creative period. Mm -hmm. People were aware of the need to no longer be bound by their tribal loyalties, but to come together yeah. as a new people. They were creating themselves. So the music, the literature, the, the dance, when mere expression of a deeper need or impulse to create a new black South African people, OK? Mm -hmm. Now, in fact, later on, this is the reason why you know, the, National, the Nationalist Party decided to get rid of Sofia Town and other townships, because they realized that black people were no longer wanting to be bottled up in old tribal identities, OK? So Sofia Town reminds us of that energy, that a commitment, mm. that self-consciousness mm. towards creating a larger identity. Yeah. One thing I will, I will say, I remember it was a place where all nationalities existed. Because I remember I went, going to buy bubble gum from the corner shop, and it was a Chinese shop. And there were Indians there. A mixture, a mixture huh? What do you want to say? You've been saying, hey, man, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Let's hear. Now, somebody said, PP from Sophia Town. I said, no, because all data spoilers a cherry, Alexandra. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I went to Sophia Town to visit the church, uh, Methodist Church was there in, in Edward uh, Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just went to my friends there, and my aunt was married there. But uh, like I said, <laughs> I guess, uh, Alexandra spoilers a cherry egg. Oh, my child, I want to call her PP. Oh, yes, it's true. I brought her up. I used to call her, myself and other people, used to call her Poodle when she was a young girl. And I still call her Poodle now as a young lady of 29. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. At this point, I would also like to recognize someone who also taught me how to sing, Emily Mutsielwa 
who together with her husband Griffith dominated the music scene of the 20s, 30s and 40s and 50s. Her famous song was Siranta Bole. Let's hear the young Manhattans take us back to those days. <laughs> Having fun in studio. Talk yeah. about <clears throat> uh, it's Thank so you. nice to sound like ourselves, like we're listening here. We're getting so much of too much of other people in our radios, TV. To listen to such music is so reviving. In essence, you know, Felicia, I have a show opening in Bloomfontein on the 22nd. As a beauty. We try to dress like ourselves, dance like ourselves, stories about us. I get happy. That's why I came to this show. Mm -hmm. So giving us that, you bring us back to our roots now, which we must all be proud of. Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Don't go, stay tuned after the break. We hear a real South African classic, La Kuchona Ilanga wow. with Maralo. Are young musicians achieving the same high quality of performance as in the Sophia Town days? What do you think? Let us know, yes or no. 082 280 8585. Oh, yeah. Golden Oldie. We continue to celebrate the music of Sophia Town and honoring the greats that came from that era from Sophia Town. Now their names are in the Hall of Fame at Gold Reef City. <laughs> yeah, apparently you were the big you were the big guy in Sophia Town, huh? Me, I just Stand used up. to I, used, I just used to visit so far town to go and sketch as an artist. Look, look for I've girls. I've been enjoying huh? it there. You're looking for the ladies. I enjoyed myself. Were well, you looking for the ladies? That was my line, baby. Currently, <laughs> 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 you're going to be honouring these uh, some of the artists well, of so far town. And Felicity, you know, once when we were doing our, our um, investigations and our research, because basically we do party design, so we decided Sapphire Time was a great theme. And when I came to research it, and I used the work of the late Bob Gassani and, um, and Jürgen Schadeberg, it's the most fantastic thing. And what came through was the romanticizing of it. Those were vibrant days. And as I came and I investigated more, I came upon what, who I would call the first ladies of Sapphire Time. And the more uh, that we went into it, we found that people w do want to honor them. They've got so much to share. They've got so much history, and this history needs to be documented. But in order to document it, everyone invites the people, they invite the stars, but what they forget about are their basic needs. Because these are ladies who don't even have cars, they, need, they should have cars, they should have drivers, but effectively people invite them around and say, come and eat with us, but what do the people just want to come and eat? They actually need to attend to their basic needs, and that's what came out of this is, as we decided about Sapphire Town and that we would do a trust, a special event trust, because again, what came out more was it isn't only the Sapphire Town yeah. people who need looking after, it's the spoilers from Alexander, it's the ink spots who are out there. Nobody's really attending to their basic needs, and we see these headlines which says, oh. pauper burial. We don't want to see that, we shouldn't be proud. 
out about that. That's right. And every one of the people from that time, we should be putting a fund aside for them so that they've got money, that there's some dignity, so that nobody knows that there'll ever be another pauper's funeral for the people who, who were involved with Sophia Town, with Alexander, with the Pimbles, all at the time. And that's what it's all about. So as this came upon about us, we say that what Al Capone is to Chicago is what Sophia Town should be to Johannesburg, wow. South Africa. Wow. It's a culture wow. and a heritage yeah. that should yeah. be worldwide. Yeah. The pictures are all here. Look at Miriam Makeba. Look at Dolly Ratebe. Yes, Dolly is a bay as a young Dolly and Tandy. Oh, and look at Tandy. And we're going to be auctioning Dolly. these pictures. We're going to auction these. Because they're going to be going, and the profits are going to go hey. to the ladies and a percentage to the new foundation. And that's what we're looking about is getting Dad, memorabilia, yeah. getting it out there and getting it. Yeah, yeah, I've always been a yeah. tricky queen. That's the nostalgia of Sophia Town, <laughs> and we'd like to thank Hollett Insurance for bringing those memories back to us and sponsoring it. Adele, my head goes off to you Thank for you. recreating Sophia Town again. Dean, your work on Sophia Town is unbelievable. I mean, the pictures that you draw, the sketches all over the Hall of Fame that has been recreated at Goldie City, take our heads off to you as well. And to the legends of Sophia Town, we say, Please don't let this memories die. We no, look uh, forward to you keeping it going. Yeah, Can I give you the mic? I know you are also calling me every time, trying to have me come back and do something there. Felicia, back in 97, a, a group of people who were living in Sophia Town decided to pursue the idea of forming a memorial there, Sophia Town. We looked at the idea of having a Sophia Town open air amphitheater a wall of remembrance and, and integrating it with the Melville copies. Uh, we actually talked with people from the former Sophia Town community and with the current community, and we got a lot of broad-based support. Mm -hmm. All the Sophia Town people I've talked to have some kind of feeling that something needs to be there mm -hmm. in that space to remember that great community. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mari, could you stand? Thanks, Mari. Mari, uh put together that beautiful show that night, honoring all these musicians. We thank you for your work. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> well, Adele, it's a fire town time, okay. and we're back at the convention center. It is hot. If you've not been there, you better go there right now, the Senton Convention Center. One of the most well-known songs from the 50s is La Kuchona Ilanga. Let us hear Mara give us that beautiful song composed by Mangwengwe Makei Davashe. Oh! 
African classic. Yeah. It is Mama. a South African yeah. classic. Yeah. yeah. Lekker, zoals ze zullen zeggen, het was lekker. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Thank you, Mara. Uh, what, did they, what did you say? What did you say? I'm telling you, I love the fact that they compliment each other. People, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. I'll tell you what's touching me, and I'm not going to lie, and I'm going to be blunt about it, is when I see the Dinah Rosses, the Roberta Flex, the Dion Warwick's come here, we revere them. And here are their age groups. We don't revere them at home. We have beautiful music, South Africa, but somehow we don't realize it. And thanks to people like you, always bring it up through the Safar Town Festival. Now, through the Hall of Fame, we cannot forget it through what you're about to create. Don't make me want to cry now, y'all, because I really hate to see what's happening to our musicians. Excuse me for bringing it up, but in the United States, they literally roll the carpet for Huma Sikela, roll the carpet for Miriam Makeba, and I ask, why can't we roll the carpet for these people? Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah. At home. Yeah. At home. Yeah. I guess we're right when we say a prophet is never recognized in his own backyard. But it's about time we turned it around for the good of our children. Listen to this. In 1939, Solomon Linda, a migrant worker, composed one of the biggest selling songs of all time to come out of Africa, Mbube. Did he, was he recognized for it? I don't know. Later, Peter Seeger and his band, The Weavers, copied it and released it as Way My Way. I've never heard such yeah. a word in African language, but anyway, Way My Way, in 1952. In 1961, it was released by the Tokens as the lion sleeps tonight, and it has gone to earn millions of dollars. Where is this migrant worker today? May his soul rest in peace, but we will always recognize him. Let us hear the Dockey House singers as they sing this famous song, Mbube. But I hope you enjoyed our journey back in time as we pay tribute to some of our forgotten musical stars and composers. The Felicia Show has always been a proud supporter of South African music. I hope that by showcasing some of the talents of a past generation, we can get South Africans to recognize and appreciate our rich and diverse musical heritage. I think Martin Sweet is right when he says we really should create a movie about our life in South Africa. Until next time, goodbye, South Africa.
letters that we've received at the Felicia on E show this week include this one from Makubongwe at the Vista University PE campus. He'd like to suggest a topic, crime, bail and vigilantes. He goes on to say, thanks Felicia, keep up the good work. Your show is helping a number of our people. Our second letter comes from Elton. Hi Felicia, I really think your show is informative. However, I do believe there's room for improvement. Firstly, there are a lot of stars from America that come to South Africa these days. Isn't it maybe possible, being the voice of South Africa, to get them onto your show? Then we received a letter from a Canadian marine engineer on board an oil tanker who watched the program via satellite. He says, keep up with your good show. Sailors around the world are being entertained. God bless you and your crew. For your inspiration, call the Felicia Motivational Line on 082-280-8500. Also read Felicia's motivational column, Straight Talk in the Sowetan Sunday World.